If you didn't hear the big news, China has launched my dream machine, at least 90% of it. As veteran observers know, we have an odd tangential connection to this project, and so let's take a look at what's happening in that project with some history. It actually goes all the way back to the Demeter satellite, a French satellite that operated last decade and which was used to document numerous electromagnetic pre-seismic anomalies to major earthquakes. Despite the flood of papers that used its data, it was never used to forewarn to deliver information about those signals before the actual earthquakes. It was decommissioned, and since then we've awaited another machine to do what it did, but in a way that would be useful to everyone. Well, the new machine has some upgrades to be sure, including an electric field detector, which was one of the two things, along with an ultraviolet imager, which is not on the satellite, that I believed would indicate when the solar polar fields were acting strongly on Earth's magnetic system and could cause the major earthquakes. That was indeed the subject of a paper written in 2015. My co-authors Dr. Wu Yen and Dr. Holloman helped confirm the correlation statistically between the solar polar fields and earthquakes and then described the mechanism. One of the first people to ever read and review the final paper is actually a member of this project and is likely to be exceptionally knowledgeable about concepts related to electroquakes. Good sign for them. The reason he was probably selected for the review was this project indeed, which he actually started to be a part of while we were first discovering that some of the electromagnetic pre-seismic anomalies might be a connection to space weather beyond just the lithosphere-atmosphere-ionosphere connection. He was already in the planning process for this satellite, and now, today, is the day it finally launches. The mission is supposed to be only five years and will only survey China and nearby Southeast Asia and probably Europe as well since an Italian group is heavily involved, but it will be turning off most of those devices for the most part around other areas of the world. It will include at least a few years of study protocols and data gathering before considering any active alert and, even so, it could be possible that the locations will be restricted and might even be considered China's private information wouldn't be the first time. However, this absolutely puts this China and Italy team in the major race to be the kings of electromagnetic earthquake forecasting. For those just joining the program and don't know about some of the other notable groups in that electroquake category, one of them is the NASA and ETH Zurich team, which came out with their model results and plans to go forward in November of last year. At the end of the day, they actually came to include the two atmospheric parameters that we use in our model, outgoing long-wave radiation and the geoelectric system of Earth, although we like to use the global electric circuit as indicated by wind and pressure. For more on our model, including the background from 2015, you can go to quakewatch.net and look up at the top right. Our current model is found in the 2017 and 2018 spots just below that. While we don't have the clout of those other major groups, we didn't have the hurdles of academia, government, and policy, and we are indeed already more than a year into successful real-world forecasting. You can learn about that there, too. However, there is no question that today... It is the Chinese and Italian teams that stand in the spotlight. It's their day, and given their 100% electromagnetic focus, I can only predict at least some measure of success for them. And I can honestly say, I hope for that success to bolster the awareness and acceptance of electromagnetic pre-seismic anomalies as a means of realistically forecasting earthquakes. Be safe, everyone.